All right, pre-calculus, here we go. This is on section 2.7 on what we call nonlinear inequalities. And the reason why we call nonlinear inequalities is because you guys should already, been, should already know how to solve a linear inequality. For example, 2x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 8, for example. This is an example of a, not, or of a linear inequality because the um, x itself has a power of 1, which means it's linear. And this is easy to solve. You would just add 6 to the other side, and you get a 14. And then you divide by 2, and you get x is greater than or uh, equal to 7. So you'd say on a number line, OK, here's 7. I could equal 7, so filled in dot. Or I could shade above because it's greater than. And we like using intervals in this class. You'd say the interval starts at 7 and a bracket because it's equal to, and it could always go towards infinity. So the answer would be all numbers anywhere starting at 7 or towards infinity. But again, that's linear. That's easy. Okay, we want to do the same idea here. So we're going to use intervals as our answers, but we've got to be careful. We've got to solve nonlinear inequalities. So here's an example of a nonlinear inequality that I'm talking about, and the process to solve them is actually quite simple. Here's the example x squared uh, minus 2x minus 3. See, it's nonlinear because it's a quadratic, actually. So this is a nonlinear inequality. And it's got to be an inequality, so we'll say it's less than 0. That's a crazy looking less than sign. OK. So here's the idea. The, the, the key thing you need is a 0 right here, because that's what you need when you're working with things that are nonlinear, because you've got to be able to factor. So we're looking for a 0 to be right there. And we already got that. That's beautiful. Then we simply got a factor. So it's like I told you guys in class, if you can't factor, this section might you know be a little bit difficult for you. So let's see. I need a 3 and a 1. That's going to be a negative 3 and a positive 1. That way, the inside and outside terms make that negative 2. So if this was an equation, we would say, all right, x equals 3, x equals negative 1. We're done. Yeah, but this is not an equation. This is an inequality. So these are not answers or solutions. These are what we call critical numbers. Okay, or even more important, critical values. They're critical values, critical numbers. And what these critical values do is they create test intervals for us. So we create a number line here. We put them on the number line in order, and we have to test out these intervals. So we create one, two, three intervals. So I'm just going to test those intervals out and see what happens. Now the key that I'm looking for is that I need numbers that are less than 0, not equal to 0. So that's really important because that means 3 and negative 1 are not solutions. Open dots, they're not solutions because they make 0. And I'm not allowed to be 0. I've got to be strictly less than 0. Less than 0 is numbers that we refer to as negative numbers. So that's pretty simple. We're looking for negative numbers. So all we got to do is do some tests. So let's test any number down here. Any number below negative 1, your wildest imagination. I'm going to go negative 100. Negative 100 minus 3 is going to be a negative value. And negative 100 plus 1 is also going to be a negative value. And I really don't care what numbers they are. I'm just trying to think negative or positive. And then I know that two negatives, when multiplied, create a positive. So numbers down in this range create positives. And I don't want positives. Remember, I want to be less than 0. So I want negative numbers. I don't want positive numbers. So answers do not exist down here. They're going to create positives. I need negatives. So let's test a number in between. You could test any number in the world in between. I'm going to pick an easy one, 0. 0 minus 3 is a negative. 0 plus 1 is a positive. Again, I don't really care what number they are. I just care about their sign. And I know that a negative times a positive is a negative. And now I like negatives because the answers that I'm looking for need to be less than 0. So these right here are solutions. These are values that make me negative. Okay. Now the last interval to check is anything greater than 3. So I've got to check anything greater than 3, so 5. 5 minus 3 is positive. 5 plus 1 is positive. And a positive times a positive is obviously a positive. But once again, I'm looking for values that are less than 0, negative. So those do not work. So the answer to my inequality, my nonlinear inequality, would be all numbers from negative 1 to 3, and there's the interval that I would give. Now, why am I not using brackets? Because I'm not allowed to equal negative 1 or 3, because I have to be strictly less than. Negative 1 and 3 make me equal to 0. I can't equal 0. And um, the interval, that's not a point. It, it just represents the interval of all numbers from negative 1 to 3. All right, so let's check out another problem here. and Let's see if you guys can uh, you know, use kind of the same concepts here to uh, figure this one out. All right, let's see here. x squared minus x minus 6 is less than 0. OK, so once again here, I have to factor. And I need a 0 right here. So lucky I already have that 0 there. So I got x. I'm going to need a minus 3. I'm going to need an x. I'm going to need x plus 2 here. 
uh, less than zero. So let me just double check in my mind that that works out right. It does. So I get x equals three. I get x equals negative two. But those are not solutions. This is not an equation. These are our critical, critical values. And I'm going to just start calling them CVs from now on. CVs, critical values. And with those critical values, you make a number line, put them in order. So negative 2 comes before 3. And it doesn't say I'm allowed to equal 0. 3 and negative 2 will make me equal to 0. So I need open dots here because I cannot equal them. All right, and just test your numbers below. Anything below negative 2, like negative 10. Negative 10 minus 3 is a negative 13. Negative 10 plus 2 is a negative 8. All I care about is they're negative, and I know two negatives once multiplied makes positives. Uh, I need numbers less than zero. Try numbers in between. Easy one to pick is zero. Zero minus three is negative three. Zero plus two is positive two. All I care about is that there's a negative and a positive, which makes negative. I like negatives. I like numbers less than zero. Numbers greater than 3, like 22, 22 minus 3 is a positive, 22 plus 2 is a positive, and that's going to make positives, obviously, and I don't want positives. So my answer would be all numbers from negative 2 to 3, non-inclusive, which means don't include, so no brackets on those values. All right, let's check out another one here. Let's do one that might be a little bit more tricky. Okay, here, so... 2x cubed. So now we're really doing something that's really nonlinear. This is cubic, right? Uh, not that quadratics aren't nonlinear. They are nonlinear, obviously. Um, minus 32x is less than or equal to negative. I'm sorry. Whoa, I really messed that up. I got to double. I got to erase that for sure. I meant to say greater than negative 48. Okay. Well, the first thing we said was we need zero over here. We need a zero, not a negative 48. So I'm simply going to add that 48 over to here. So I get 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 32x plus 48 is greater than zero. Okay. And now I need to factor this. Well, this is a tough one to factor. So we just spent an entire chapter, right? All 2, 1 through 2, 5, basically learning how to write out the factors of um, higher degree polynomials. So what you would do is you would have to go to your calculator, graph this on your calculator, try to find one um, zero. That way you can find one factor and then use synthetic division with that zero to find a quadratic that you could then break down to two more. I'm not going to waste your time. On a test, you would have to do that. On homework, you would have to figure out how to factor this using those techniques we've talked about. Or maybe you see all three real zeros in the graph graph and you can get to your factors right away. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the factors to this are x minus 4 times x plus 4 times 2x minus 3. So I'm not going to waste the time showing how to get those factors because you should already know how. You basically would have to go to your calculator and try to hopefully see one of them. I'm assuming you would see the 4 or the negative 4 right away. Use synthetic division to find the other ones, and then you would end up with this factor. Okay, so that means we have critical values, CVs of 4, negative 4, and positive 3 halves. So those are CVs, critical values, right? So we'd make our number line here. We'd put them on there in order, negative 4 and then three halves, and then four, and then we got to start testing. We got one, two, three, four different areas to test. So let's take our time here. Pick any number less than negative four. Go with the crazy number, like negative 1,000. Negative 1,000 minus four is negative. Negative 1,000 plus four, still negative. Negative 1,000 times two is negative 2,000 minus three, even more negative. What do three negatives make? Well, the first two make a positive times a negative makes a negative. Three negatives make a negative. I'm looking for numbers greater than zero. I, I don't need negatives. I need positives. All right, pick any number between negative four and three halves. That's easy because I got a negative and a positive. I'm going to pick zero. Zero minus four is negative. 0 plus 4 is positive. 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative. And I got two negatives would make a positive. Along with the positive will make a positive. And I like positives. By the way, I forgot to determine what I need to do at these critical values. Well, these critical values make me 0. And I'm not allowed to be 0. I'm strictly greater than 0. So these, again, would be open dots. They're not filled in. 
And I got one more or two more test intervals, three halves to four. I don't know, any number in between there, pick two. Two works. So two minus four is negative. Two plus four is positive. Two times two is four. Four minus three is still positive, barely, but it's positive. And a negative and a positive make a negative and another positive make a negative. And once again, I don't really like negatives. All right, numbers greater than 4, any number, 10. 10 minus 4 is positive. 10 plus 4 is positive. 2 times 10 minus 3 is still positive. 3 positives make a positive. So I like numbers that are positive or greater than 0. So there's two intervals that work. Those intervals are any number from negative 4 to 3 halves, non-inclusive because I'm not allowed to equal 0. Take a break for a while, and then any number from 4 all the way on towards infinity. So these two intervals right here, joined with a little u for union, would represent all of the possible solutions to my nonlinear inequality. All right, let's take a look at another one here, because this is just so much fun. I know you guys are just having a blast. Um, but what we're going to look at next is um, something that we've got to really, 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 really be careful on here. And I want to take our time to look at a couple of examples right here. So we've got x squared plus 2x plus 4 is greater than 0. And then we're going to look at uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 is uh, less than or equal to 0. And then we got another one here, x squared plus 3x plus 5 is less than 0. And then we got one more here, number 7, is x squared minus 4x yeah, plus 4, sorry, is uh, greater than 0. Now, what we're going to go through these quadratics and show you is something really simple. Quadratics can do something really strange. Not necessarily strange, but they could all be above the graph. And if, the, if this particular function wanted to be greater than 0, it would be greater than 0 everywhere, the entire graph. There'd be, every number would be greater than 0. Or maybe we want to be less than 0 and we're a graph like this. Well, this particular graph, it's all less than 0. The entire thing is less than 0. Or a graph like this, well, some of it's positive. These, these parts right here are positive, and then some of it's negative. So that's one that we'd have to test the intervals. Or we could be a graph like this that just touches, so most of it's negative, but one point in particular is 0. So if we're not equal to 0, that would be a point we got to leave out. So um, you got to be very, very careful for these problems. So one way to do it is to graph them to kind of see what happens here, find out if there are any zeros. So like this one right here, it's actually not factorable. You can't factor this one. x squared plus 2x plus 4 is unfactorable. So take a look at the graph of it. And I'll kind of let you explore on your own. But if you take a look at the graph of it, you'll realize that it's all positive. It, it is, it, the graph looks like this in, in some form. It's not exactly like this. But the idea of is the entire graph is above the x-axis. The entire graph is positive. So that would mean that the solution set would be negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers, because every part of it is positive. This one right here we have to be very, very careful of as well, because this one says we're looking for numbers that are negative, less than 0, or equal to 0. Well, again, I'm going to let you take a look at the graph of this, but the graph of this is actually like this, okay, which is an interesting graph because it's always positive except for this one point that's 0. So this point right here, it's kind of an actually an interesting one because I need numbers that are less than 0. Well, it doesn't. There's nothing down here less than 0. So there's no solutions that are less than 0, but there is one solution right there at the vertex that's equal to 0. So this, this particular answer actually has one value, x equals negative 1. And I'll let you take a, graph, a look at the graph of that to see that, but there's only one number that makes this graph happy because the most of the graph is all greater than 0. So that's what happens there. Number 6 right here, um, this particular graph, again, we're looking for negatives, but the graph, if you would take a look at it on your own, is all above 0. So again, the, we're looking for numbers that are less than 0. We're looking for negatives, but the graph itself is all positive. So there would be no answers here. So the graph would actually be the empty set. There'd be no solutions to this particular graph. Um, this last one right here is um, one where, I'll show you a picture of it, it's looking for numbers that are greater than 0, right? And the graph does something like this. It's not exact, but it's something like that, like we looked at up here as well. 
And what happens here is we're looking for numbers greater than zero, strictly greater than zero. So pretty much the entire graph is greater than zero, except for that vertex. So if you take a look at it, I know my graph looks wrong. The vertex is actually a two, so maybe I should re-graph this. You got, I want you to take a look at the graph on your own, but it comes right here and it just touches it two. So that one point at two would not work because it doesn't seem allowed to equal zero and two would make you equal to zero. So the answer here would be negative infinity to two uh, and then two to infinity. So it'd be every number except for two. So those are kind of four tricky situations you got to look at too. They only happen with quadratics, which are either all above, all below and so forth. So be kind of careful when those happen. Just kind of some, some four unique situations to take a look at. All right. Up next, and I just want to check my time here. I'm at about 15 minutes. So we're going to do one more problem here. And this, this next problem is what we call a rational, a rational um, inequality. Okay. So it's not um, quadratic or um, cubic. It's irrational. So let's take a look at it here. So this will be the last example we do like this. So it's 2x minus 7 divided by x minus 5. And we just got done talking about rational functions, so we should be somewhat familiar with this. Uh, less than or equal to 3. Now, here's what I need. Just like all the other nonlinear problems we've been looking at, quadratics, cubics, this number right here needs to be 0. So I need to subtract that 3 over. So I get 2x minus 7. Because, you know, when you're doing these inequalities, you're all basing your answers on positive or negative. You know what I mean? So I got to subtract 3. And I'm actually looking for numbers that are less than or equal to 0. So I'm looking for negatives or I'm looking for numbers that would equal 0. But I need to turn these two things into one fraction. So that's why we spent some time talking about adding and subtracting um, rational expressions. So I need a common denominator. That's going to be easy. My common denominator would be x minus 5. This guy already has that common denominator, so I'll just put a 2x minus 7 there because I don't need to change them at all. This guy needs that common denominator, so I will gladly go ahead and put an x minus 5 down there, but that means i got to put one on top as well. Be very careful because the negative sign right here means that negative 3 needs to be distributed. So that's going to be negative 3x plus 15, and again, less than or equal to 0. All right, now I'll go back to my green here. Okay, so on top I get, let's see here, a negative x and a plus 8, okay, and all over x minus 5. So I get some critical numbers here. Now when you're working with rational functions, critical numbers come from top and bottom. So the first critical value I have is x equals 5. Now that is a number I'm not allowed to be, but it's still a critical value. Why can I not be 5? Because it's going to make a 0 on the bottom, but it's still critical. And the other one is going to be positive 8, because if I plug in a positive 8, the negative 8 right, the negative right here turns it into a negative 8 plus 8 makes 0, and that is also a critical value. Now, I'm allowed to be 8 because um, it says or equal to 0, and 8 would make me a 0 on top. So let me take those critical values, put them on a number line. Again, even though 5 is an issue with the denominator, it's still a critical value. But I cannot be 5, so I'm going to put a cir open circle there. I can be 8, so I'm going to put a filled in dot there, because I can be 8, I just can't be 5, because 5 makes a 0 on the bottom. So you got to think about that, but still a critical value. And then let's just do our test intervals. Any number below 5, 0 is an easy one to pick. Zero, negative 0 plus 8 is positive. 0 minus 5 is negative. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So these numbers would work, because I'm looking for numbers that are less than 0. I'm looking for negatives. Pick a number between 5 and 8, like uh, 6, for example, negative 6 plus 8 is positive, 6 minus 5 is positive, two positives being divided makes a positive, and I'm not looking for positives, I'm looking for less than 0. One more, any number greater than 8, like uh, 12, okay, negative 12 plus 8 would be negative, on the bottom, 12 minus 5 would be positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative, and I like negatives. I'm looking for numbers that are less than 0. So I get any number below 5 but not equal to 5, a number greater than 8 and equal to 8 because it says or equal to would work here. So my final answer, final answer would be every number from negative infinity to 5, parenthesis on that 5 because I can't equal it, and then continue on with every number from 8 with a bracket towards infinity. So brackets versus parentheses are really important in this unit. And I'm going to rewrite this, negative infinity, I don't like how that looks, to 5, union bracket, 
8, my 8s look really crappy, towards infinity, okay? So right there's my solution. So we got to be very careful with parentheses versus brackets. you got to understand critical values. Um, come from factors. They also come from top and bottom when you're dealing with um, rational inequality. So we're going to do some practice with this. Just want you to get a feel for the process that needs to be done in order to find those critical values. Once you have the critical values, you're going to make your interval and then find out where the solutions lie. All right, pour in check, out.